Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday, August 5th. I can't believe it's August already. Uh, thanks for giving me five to seven minutes as we look at another leadership principle. The point of this, why I'm doing this, is to encourage us to learn about leadership, that we can practice these principles that we learn in our five to seven minutes of time together. We want to continue to be better leaders and continue to grow in our leadership opportunities as we continue to help people in our church grow and then also help the gospel go out to our neighborhood and our community. This week, I want to talk about corporate success. <coughs> Excuse me. What does it look like? It often looks like this, and it looks like the title on the door. And we learn that the more successful we are, the bigger title that we get. And that means the more leadership opportunities that we have. Sometimes we look at corporate success, and it looks like the people that report to us. And we look at it and say, I only have two people reporting to me. Someone else has five or seven or 700, and that makes them more important. Some of you watching this, you have experienced this, and it looks like it's the rungs of the ladder we climb for our success in the secular world. Some of you have been working at this for very hard and for very long, and you are very high on the ladder, and I don't want to knock your success. But some of you have experienced this. Some of you have been disillusioned by this ladder as well. As someone has passed you by, someone younger, someone quicker, someone that has a, more of a drive or a desire to go higher. And in today's leadership principle, we want to look at people because sometimes when you start looking at the rungs of the corporate ladder, we stop looking at people as people and we start looking them as rungs or notches in our belt for success. And we want to look at people not as a stepping stone to a different title. We want to look at people as an opportunity to help them learn about leadership and then to add value to their lives. And especially in the church, we want to add Add a, a Jesus value to their life as we introduce them to the gospel and then as we watch them grow in their knowledge of God and then help to pass that gospel along. We're in a, this book by John Maxwell, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Today we're looking at the law of addition. John says this on page 51. He says, I believe the bottom line in leadership isn't how far we advance ourselves. And I want to stop right there. That that flies in the face of the corporate ladder. That flies in the face of what we have been taught, <clears throat> what we're being taught in leadership principles, in leadership classes, what we learn from secular leadership. The object is to get as high as you can, as quick as you can, and advance yourselves by, no, by all means possible. John says the bottom line of leadership isn't how far we advance ourselves. The bottom line of leadership is not how far you are on the corporate ladder, but how far you use your influence to advance others. So whether you're the intern or whether you're the executive CEO, your leadership has the opportunity to help others to learn. In the Christian world, in the church world, we would say, how am I using my influence to equip others? How am I using what I've learned and what I know to help others learn from my mistakes and from what I'm learning so that they can go further than me with the influence they have? Leadership isn't about what title that you have. Leadership is about the influence and, if you will, the betterment that you give to people as you have interactions with them. We've looked at this passage in other Gospels, but I love this passage. It continues to be a, a common thread through all the leadership books that I read. First of all, because uh, most of them are written by Christian authors. But second of all, this principle is starting to go into the corporate world. And I get this from Mark chapter 10, verse 43. Jesus is speaking and he says, whoever wants to be a leader... And there's a lot of people that want to be leaders. I would say you're watching this today because you are a leader. You are someone that has influence that can help people learn, that can help better people, that help equip people, that you have influence in some part of our church. So you are a leader. And some people desire that leadership position. Some others do not. But Jesus speaking here, he says, whoever wants to be a leader. So if you want to be a leader, this should cause you to pause and, and listen. Hey, whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. 
So Jesus takes it a step further and says, if you're in leadership, if you have this idea of a corporate ladder, it's not about the title on the door. It's about whom can you serve? How can you use your influence to serve? If anyone desired to and, and deserved the right to be served, it would be Jesus, the King of kings, the lords of lords, the Son of God. He would be the one that we should come and we should serve him. But Jesus came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And Jesus said a great leadership principle here. If you want to be a leader, use your influence to serve others. Use your influence to help others advance as far as they can go and not try to keep them down and squash them or snuff them out so that you can keep advancing up the ladder. Use the influence you have to help equip people. What a great reminder today that when we're in leadership, we are to help serve people, that we are to help others advance. So the question I have for you today as we wrap up is, how are you using your influence? Are you using it for the betterment of Jesus? Are you using it to help advance others? Or are you looking to just use your leadership as a way of a title within the church? I'm I'm a deacon. I'm a trustee. I'm a music person. I, I'm the fellowship person. Or are you using this to serve? serve others and to help others and equip others? Are you using your title as pastor just to say, I have a pastor of a church? Or am I using my title, my opportunity to help equip people and help advance them? Let's take a, a page out of Jesus's leadership here and learn and say, wow, if I want to be a leader, I need to be a servant. So the question I have for you on this August 5th is, who are you serving? In your leadership position, whom are you serving? It's a great question to ask. Thanks for watching. Trust that you've been encouraged. I trust that you've been challenged. Now let's go ahead and use this principle to continue to make ourselves leaders that follow after the example of Christ. Have a great Wednesday.